Today on The Dirty Shop, we are going to build an elevator lift for my grandpa, who's or great grandpa, I guess, uh, who is uh, having a little trouble getting up and down the stairs. So we're building this. <laughs> Warning, this video may contain scenes of extreme untidiness. Viewer discretion is advised. So the first thing I got for this project, I had to order a bunch of pieces and wait for them to show up in the mail so that I could build this thing. And I ordered some of these roller pieces that go in this super strut, because I can use this super strut as the vertical uh, guidance on my, my elevator platform. And then these rollers will give it something nice and smooth to roll on. And these fit nicely in the tracks here. And so to see how that works, I've got one sitting here just like that. So you can see it fits in the track and rolls quite nicely and they're pretty darn sturdy. They've got three half inch bolt holes in them which is you know ten times as much shear as the super strut could handle so not too worried about that. So these will be my vertical guidance. Now I just got to build, I'm going to build an arch arrangement that will attach the bolt to these and then I'm going to build a platform on the bottom of that with some rails around it and that should be my elevator and then we're going to attach that inside the shop. So I gotta go and cut out the parts for this frame and get back here and weld them together. I went over to the place where I need to install this and I got measurements for everything uh, because it's fairly far away and I'm not able to go back. So I took a ton of pictures, got measurements so that I could get this right, hopefully. I'm always kind of a hopeful guy. But uh, I've got my two uprights cut six and a half feet long and I need to drill some holes in them to attach to these rails. So I'll do that first and then I think I need to go about 36 inches uh, between my rails so that there's plenty of room to stand there and then I'll probably go out about 30 inches because there's going to be leverage out because the rails are going to be like that going up and down and there's going to be a platform and since the lift is going to be on top of here it's going to have some leverage doing this so I don't want to make this too long but of course it has to have room to be able to get on it um, and be, have space so uh, I'll have to see how it looks as I go along never built one of these before it's always a bit of a uh, chop and change and and uh, figure out things as they go but the first thing I do is I'm gonna drill holes in these pipes so that they'll bolt up to my rails and then I'll figure out the width that I want these to be okay I've got my part rigged up in the machine here I'm gonna drill these holes of course you, if you're doing this you could drill these by hand these are not accurate holes at all um, it's not super critical but I've got a super you know I've got a mill a super drill press on steroids so I'm going to use this. But I only want to use two of these bolt holes in each of these. Three is overkill. One is overkill, really. But I, two is what I'm going to use. And these holes are approximately half an inch. Oh my. my calipers. Now, to find the distance between holes like this, you measure the hole width, the hole diameter, right here. And this is 0.56. So I'm going to take my calculator here. Turn it on. So I'm going to go 0.56. And I'm going to add it to the distance between the holes here. So I'm going outside to outside hole here, so I'm just gonna add that. I'm gonna measure that, and that's 0.31, or 1.31, 1 1.31. 1 and the distance between those two holes center to center is 1.87 inches. So, one and seven eighths, basically, between those holes. So we'll go 1.87, and I've already set my zeros here, so I'm gonna move my X to uh, two inches where I want my first hole to start. And it, Y minus one point, oh, oops, minus 0.75. And that should move to where the first hole is gonna be. We jog that down. And that looks about right for my first hole. So that's gonna go right there. And the platform is gonna go off in that direction or whatever. So I'm gonna do those two holes and then I'm gonna get the other part and put it in here, and then I'll figure out where I'm gonna put them on the upper portion.
Well, I've got these welded together now. Uh, so I've got my, my upright frame. My, my uh, lift is going to attach right here, my hoist to haul this up and down. And I've got it laid out in the tracks here, bolted together to see how it tracks and to make sure my, my legs are parallel. I measured them and everything, but uh, I'm paranoid and I, I check things a lot. So to make sure that things are lining up because it's really hard to go back and unweld something. So I'm, what I'm watching for when I slide this back and forth is for these out, outer legs, these, these main uprights to, to go in and out like this, right? So if the ends are expanding and, and contracting as I slide it back and forth, that means that these are uh, tapered or, or that there's some angle in my legs. And they're not moving at all, which is perfect. So that means I'm tracking straight up and down, at least good enough for what I'm doing and I can move on to the next step. Okay, so we're moving right along in this project. It's going really well, which is great. Um, I'm using some scrap material now. I only bought enough of this bigger stuff to do these uprights and the crossbars there and the top piece. So uh, I, I'd like to have some more for this railing. I probably should have bought it, but I had some scrap, so it's good. I've got this uh, one inch by two inch that's gonna go here as the handrails. And then I'm gonna use this one inch angle iron right here on the corner to tie it together. And then I'm gonna put a cross tie here out of this one inch by eight inch strap. It just goes all the way down to kind of, kind of bind it all together. I decided to make these pretty high so that if the person standing in here, because I am building it for a person, um, were to slip and fall, then it would support them fairly high up on their body. Because um, in reality, a railing could be a little lower and it wouldn't be a problem for most people. So I went with 42 inches I was trying to find a good, good, good height, and 42 seemed like the answer. So I put 42 uh, there. I'm gonna weld these on. I'm gonna put these right here, and then all I have to do is, well, I've still got a few things to do. Okay. Start with that, and uh, we'll see how it goes to the next step. In case you ever needed to do so, a table saw will cut aluminum, but it's horribly noisy. So, you know, just consider that when you're doing it and make sure to wear appropriate earplugs. It also tends to throw chips at you, which can hurt pretty bad. So, that also is something you need to be aware of. This diamond plate is a quarter inch thick, and because of the way I made mine, my part, I, I just need to cut a 32 inch wide piece off of it, and I'll be good to go. So I'm gonna cut this, and you know, I shouldn't have much left to do in the painting. Now, if you remember when I drew, drilled these, or when I did these bottom bars, I drilled holes in them. I used a number seven bit, which is the right size for a quarter 20 tap. And I plan on tapping these once I've used them as guide holes. And so I'm gonna put this quarter inch plate up here, and then I'm gonna use these holes that I drilled as guide holes, and then I'm gonna read, and then I'll tap these later, and I'll drill these back out to a quarter inch. It's a little bit kind of a roundabout way to do it, but it works pretty well for something like this. So I'm gonna go through and drill a couple of these with uh, these number eights, 
uh, number sevens, I mean, and then uh, we'll get them all bolted together with the quarter 20s and have this bottom plate secured. Uh, I've, I've got a bunch more of these uh, number seven drill bits, and I'm just gonna, after I've drilled the first hole there, I'm just gonna put that in there to work as kind of a guide so that I could drill the next couple of them, and uh, they'll be still aligned. Now that I've got all this assembled, I've got my lift here, came in the mail, and uh, I picked it up on Amazon. Obviously, you can see from the box what it is, but uh, in, in American terms, it said it was uh, 440 or doubled its 880 pound lift, so, and I plan on doubling it for what I'm doing. And when you get one of these hoists, you got to make sure that you get, uh, for, for a house use here, you need to make sure you get one that has a 120 volt motor on it. Uh, most of the ones you see are, are car winches and they're 12 volts. And I'm sure you could get a converter, but why bother? The nice thing about this one too, is it's got this automatic cutoff, right? So the lift will lift up to this point and shut the lift off. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to make myself a part that goes on this cable. And then we could adjust the height of that and wherever it lines up, level with the floor we want this to line up to then it'll i'll set the the uh the shut off to shut off at that point so this is going to go up on top of my lift here i'm going to bolt it on we're going to see how it looks there we go sweet we're pretty close to ready all righty i've been a couple days i went out to uh, did some camping over the weekend and now I've got to get the last bit of this on here and then I can uh, spray paint it and we'll go install it. So I've, I'm making a rail for the back of this and I just want it to swing up and down and have a catch on one end. So I've taken a bar and I've drilled, this is just three quarter inch conduit, and I've drilled a three eighths hole in each end, but uh, 90 degrees off of each other. So there's one there and one in there. And if you want to see how to do this, I'll give you a link to a video uh, how to drill holes in a pipe. It's really simple. Uh, tool for drilling aligned holes or, or angled holes in a pipe uh, like this so that you get them actually 90 degrees off but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a quarter inch bolt in this side and put that on there and I've drilled and tapped a hole right there for that and this, this quarter inch bolt is plenty strong for what I want to do it's just a safety rail and this will allow it to uh, have a little bit of movement here and then on this end since I've got my 3 8 hole pointing up now, I'm going to put a bar that sticks down here and you can just set this down on that bar. So you'll be able to lift it off of there and let it go, it'll swing down, and then you'll be able to bring it back up and set it on there and you'll see what I'm talking about after I get this bar made and welded on. I forgot that I was going to have to do some welding today, so I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts and sandals, which is not unusual for me to weld in t-shirts and shorts and sandals, except that this welding is up tall where it can fall on my feet. Normally I can cover my legs and I'm good, but uh, this could be interesting. So here we go. Let me cover my feet. Like that. Sweet. Now all I have to do is clean it up, paint it, go install it. These rollers that I got with this thing, or that I got for this elevator, uh, they have this bar down the middle of them right here, you can see, and it sticks down too far. So I actually took it and milled a little bit of that off so that I'd have more space in between them, because otherwise there's no way to attach these rails onto the wall. Uh, which seems like a kind of a design flaw to me. But uh, I cut it up enough so that I can get a wood screw or this, a small screw head underneath it. So I'm going along these rails and drilling holes that I could put use wood screws to attach, because these are gonna go into a two by four anyways or two by six for the verticals and uh, you'll see how that goes when we get there but as, until then I got to drill holes for my wood screws in this board in this uh, rail last step before I can go and install this is to paint it I just I'm not a paint expert but uh, I'm just gonna use some spray paint and I went up and picked up a couple of these paint plus primers from uh, Mace 
I've used it before, it works pretty good and solid. And I've got to spray the bottom of it and then flip it up and then do all the sides. So uh, hopefully this will work out for me and I can move on to the next uh, install tomorrow. I'm gonna wear my cool mask that I made for my coronavirus safety setup and it should be good enough. So cool. So we're going to put the elevator right in here and it's going to rise up. The elevator is going to come up to this bottom step right here so we can walk on right there, raise it up and get on right there. So we're putting all those parts out and then we're going to install it. elevator here it's in the down position it's got a nice little rail here we'll put up it hooks on right there so they don't fall out and we can go and take a ride in it so we got our switch we'll put our safety rail up there and we got our switch here on the rail I would like to make a strap for that it's better than this duct tape but it works And it's got an automatic stop right there. You can see down here we've got this nice flat board that steps down there. And then that's attached to this little rope here. And this can go up so you can use the stairs. Oop. Try to do this one handed. There you go. So there, that's in the up position. So when you come out, you can put this down. It sits nicely. Leave that hanging there. And then we can go back down the stairs. Hi, Dougie. So there you go, that was my elevator build video. Uh, I had a couple little autofocus issues with this new camera I'm using. I'm working on that, hopefully it won't happen in the future. Gotta learn a new game. Uh, it ended up a little longer of a video than I intended because I wanted it to be clear the, uh, as possible the items I was using and the way I was building this project so that if you wanted to build something similar in the future, uh, you could maybe get some hints and tips for your project and have an idea of the kind of things you might need to use to build it. Mine worked very well. Um, it, everything kind of came out as I expected. The only real little issue that I had with the whole project, which is pretty rare to only have one problem, is that when I, uh, when the cable winds up, the, the cable strands have a tendency to roll over each other. And then they, uh, when they drop off of those, of each other, they, they tend to maybe shudder a little bit in the elevator and make a kind of a clunking sound, which I don't really like. I'm going to try greasing the cables and see if that, uh, maybe smooths it out a little bit. Uh, but otherwise it all worked really well and I was pretty happy with this project. It was pretty cool. I've never done anything like this before and it worked great. So I can't complain there. For those of you who are, who are subscribed to my channel already, I really appreciate it. For those of you who haven't, if you like what I'm doing, maybe hit that subscribe button, maybe hit that like button, give me a thumbs up. Helps me show up better on YouTube and it just makes me feel good. And uh, I do really appreciate it. Uh, until the next time, thank you for watching The Dirty Shop.